Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be going over a couple of new tools to me. And this is a sort of sponsored video. These were sent to me by Field Piece, and I'm using them on a condenser changeout anyway. So I figured we'd talk about them. This is the VP87 vacuum pump, the 8C CFM vacuum pump. If you watch my videos, you know that I've been using this for months and months now. It is a workhorse. The things I like about it are the backlit display on the sight glass, a big sight glass, and the ability to change my oil while it's still running. It's got a brushless DC motor, which means you can pull a vacuum from an inverter in your van with very little startup amps. The other one they sent me is the recovery machine, the MR45. This is new to me. It's also, it also has a brushless DC motor and it has this digital display. And the one I did have had tiny little gauges that broke after like four months. So it's nice to be able to see the in pressure and the outlet pressure. And you can zero this like you can on a manifold and the brushless DC motor goes up to 3000 RPMs and it has a larger condenser on it so it can recover the refrigerant really fast. And spoiler alert, it recovered on a ton and a half split system in three minutes. That's virtually no wait time. So here comes that condenser change out. Here we go. Guys, we have arrived on the job to do this condenser. We're changing out a Goodman for a Rood. And my first job is to get that refrigerant recovered because the compressor is shot. Here we go. This is one that I suspect was a compressor burnout. <clears throat> I just, when I quoted the job, I just quoted a compressor. I com quoted a compressor change with um, both filter suction and liquid line and then I quoted a just replacing the condenser all right it is nice that you can zero pressure on this and this has a um one of those brushless DC motors. So that makes it. Oh, this has a Schrader depressor in it. It does have a brushless DC motor that can go up to 3000 RPM. So hopefully it will recover really fast like. closed right now open those up all right I'm gonna go ahead and open this before I turn it on that drum already had a vacuum on it
Alright, let's. So actually in about three minutes, because I was off about 30 seconds, in about three minutes, we got this down into a vacuum. And this is a one and a half ton, but we're pulling on the whole system. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'll be honest, I'd rather do the. This is already unhooked. I just need to unhook the electrical. Okay, so that's a real cement slab, and I really wasn't expecting that. No, 
I'm just gonna put that on top of it and try to make it look nice. Now let's work on getting this dried in and pulling the vacuum and then we can go in make some wiring changes and probably replace a fuse. It's supposed to hit 104 degrees today and in places close to the Gulf like this 104 degrees plus high humidity makes it feel miserable but I have become used to it we got all of this where I want to solder it. Now I just need to get me some protection down here to keep from setting the fire and take these Schraders out, plus do something to cool off these valves. Not forget to put these back in. This was already a 410 system, so I'm not worried about the line set. All right, let's get something to cool that off. All right, we got our nitrogen flowing. We, I've got some cool gel on that, and. I'm fixing to solder this up. I hope y'all can see all right. finger with that solder. I 
I think we're good. Let's um, pressurize it now and do a decay test. All right, I'm on 288 PSI. I have that valved off. I'm gonna let it settle down just a little bit. Hold on, I'll show you. So I'm at 288.2. Let's watch that for a little while. Now I'm gonna start taking panels off and start on some of the electrical. Pressure test is still going. We're at six and a half minutes, and I've lost um, a little over 1.2 1, 1 psi. I have mentioned this before, but. My vacuum pump fits right down in this little hole here. Looks like it's almost made for it. All right, this is the VP87 vacuum pump. And as you can see, I have been using this thing for a long time. And nobody's paying me to say this, but this is the best vacuum pump I have bought. It is extremely nice. The ability to change the oil while it's running, I just love. And you can get a huge sight glass, a backlit sight glass where you can see if the oil's dirty or milky looking. I love it. I've opened my ballast. We are at, oh, we're dropping fast, 4,300 microns and 47 seconds. Yeah, this thing's dropping real fast. Drop. Okay, in there, y'all saw me changing common from blue to brown, hooking my blues together, which we're gonna use for the reversing valve, hooking up my float switch, and I have to return to put in a three amp fuse. Okay, up here, I'm using blue for my reversing valve and brown for common. Okay, I'm at 17 minutes and 40. I had just had to turn that back on. I think it turns off after like 10 minutes. So we're getting really close to 500 microns right now. I'm just gonna let that keep pulling the vacuum. I'm already under 500 microns. I'm not gonna cut this thermostat wire short. 
You never know what may be coming here one day. I guess it's a start kit on this one. Check on our vacuum. I'm down to 447, and it's been 24 minutes. Y'all see how I have this hooked up? I have a half inch hose hooked up to my suction line, and I'm pulling a vacuum on the whole system through that right there. Keep as much of that power wire as I can. Three hundred and sixty-four microns. Let's go ahead and valve that off. Turn off our vacuum pump. As you see, our vacuum is holding. I'm gonna watch that for just a second, and. Contactors already pulled in. We're fixing to release the Freon and make sure this thing's doing right. My vacuum has actually dropped. So I'm going to cut this loose. Oops. I got the valve that all first. I hope I didn't damage it. I had to go get my Allen keys to break that open. My um, service wrench just wasn't doing it. Let's see if that'll... I always put new ones in, even on a brand new system like this. That's just my habit. After pulling a vacuum, I'll replace the Schrader cores.
like 72 degrees in there. sub cooling down a little bit it was at 22 degrees and it's 72 in there so it should be closer to you know 10 to 12 degrees so that was sub cooling my sub cooling still says negative 1.5 when it's hot out here I am um, I have found that I have trouble getting a target sub cooling all right guys so that one turned out good um the sub cooling i never could get it to target it's already over 95 degrees out here and it's not even lunchtime. and what i'm finding is when the temperature is that high charging by sub cooling just don't work i got my super heat down my super heat was all the way down to like eight degrees and i still showed like a negative 0.5 sub cooling but um i'm not going to charge that anymore thanks for watching i'll leave a link to the tools used in this video in the description and i'll catch y'all tomorrow Next